Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you some unique custom code that you can use to customize the newsletter block on your Squarespace website. We'll be giving a border to the entire block, adjusting the corners of the input box, changing up that disclaimer text just a little bit, and I'll teach you how to change the color of the sign up button on a hover. Now, as always, the codes I'm about to share are listed in the description below, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so I can show you how to install them on your website and what parts of the code you'll want to change to make it uniquely yours. Let's get started. So here we are inside Squarespace. I've got my newsletter block on the left, and then these are all the codes that we're going to be customizing today. Now, I want these to happen to every newsletter block on my entire site, so we're going to install this site-wide by navigating to Design and then selecting Custom CSS. Now I'll paste that code right here and immediately we'll see the border kick in. You can adjust the thickness of the border by changing this value here, maybe 10 px or maybe 5. You can adjust it from solid to something like dotted or even dashed. And over here we have the color, which is a dark gray that I'm using, but you can even change this to a web safe color name like the word red if you want to. Customize this border however you see fit. The next option I wanted to share with you is how to automatically make the disclaimer text capitalized. We can do that with CSS. We're going to add a new line of code and I'll paste it right here. And now it says, we respect your privacy, but in all uppercase characters. The next code is to curve the corners of the input, this area where people go to type in their email address, and we're going to give it a border. So let's take this code. We'll add a new line, I'll paste it right here. And now we can see we have a border and we've curved in the edges of the email address input field. If you change the value 30 px to something smaller, that curve won't be as dramatic. And if you leave it at 0 px, that'll reset it to the way that it was before. But I like having those curved edges on my site, so let's go ahead and move it up to 10. Now after that, we have the exact same border we worked with in the beginning, which means it's also super customizable. You can change the value here to 5, 10, even 50, but I think that'll be a bit too dramatic. Let's go back to 5. And again, change it to solid, dotted, dashed, whatever you'd like here. And also feel free to adjust this number. This here is the hex color code for this dark gray color that I like to use, but you can use a web safe color name or any color code you'd like. Leave this part right here alone, however. The part that says exclamation point important. We have to make sure the browser pays attention to the code that we've added, so leave that part right there. It lets the computer know that our code is important. Now, last but not least, one of my favorite CSS codes is changing the color of a button on a hover, so I had to throw that in here for this newsletter block. Let's add a new line of code and take a look at this code and how it works. The very first part of this code says, in a newsletter form, when you see a button and I hover over it, what I want you to do then is change the background color to this gray. Change the color of the text to this and make sure the opacity is set to one so it's totally visible. Now when we hover over it, we get that color change for both the background and the text. Pretty awesome, right? Let's go ahead and change up these colors a little bit. Maybe instead of that gray color, I'll make the background red. And instead of this gray color, we'll make the text pink. Now let's see what happens when we do that. All right, the pink text on the red doesn't look that great. I'd recommend choosing something that has a stronger contrast than that. But again, those colors are super customizable, so change them to whatever you want them to be. Don't forget to leave exclamation point important, however. It's really important that the browser reads our code over any other code it might see, and that's the only way to make sure that it's going to pick up on the code that you've added. Once you've customized these however you see fit, just select Save, and this style will be applied to any and every newsletter block on your entire Squarespace website. The codes I just shared with you are listed in the description below. Just make sure that you modify them to match the own unique style of your Squarespace website. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like and a comment and definitely subscribe to my channel because I post a brand new tutorial every single week and I want to make sure you catch the latest. Thanks again for watching, and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you'll love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. Now available in a Notion database, you can have access to all of the custom codes that I use for modifying Squarespace websites. In here, you'll find selectors, pre-made style snippets, and a bunch of pro tips. So even if you're brand new to all things CSS, you're going to love the content you'll find here. To get lifetime access to this Notion database of custom code for Squarespace, visit insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.